Hey there. So recently, a member of the RenderFam Discord asked if it was possible to create a neon plastic in Keyshot. So I did some research and learned that they're actually trying to create something called a fluorescent material. You see, highlighters and other brighter than usual plastics, they absorb light, but then they emit it at a lower energy state, which makes it appear brighter to our eyes. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any materials in Keyshot that actually do this. So naturally, I thought, hey, here's a challenge. Join me as I try to make a fluorescent plastic material in Keyshot. Finally, I wanted to give credit to Kelly Harward for providing this model for this tutorial. You can download it at grabcad.com. So once we import it into Keyshot, I only need the bottom part of the bottle for this. I'll hold Alt left click to hide everything except for the bottom part of the bottle. I wanted this because it has some thin walls with some different thicknesses and some details here. Uh, we can maybe add some rounded edges just to make this look a little bit better. So if I click on this and set the rounded edge radius to like 0.5 millimeter, these threads should round off a little bit. So first things first, we are going to make this a cloudy plastic, double click on it. We're gonna change it to plastic cloudy. We wanna make sure we are using the right lighting setup. So let's go to our lighting tab and move on into product mode. This gives us more ray bounces, global illumination. And when we double click on this, we want to change its color to something bright. Maybe this green I've saved down here. And we want to add some cloudiness. So it's at 0.1. Let's go to 0.5. We also want some roughness so it's not so shiny on the outside. So we'll go to say 0.05, just a little bit. And that right there is already looking pretty bright. And maybe this color is a little overkill for this. So let's maybe bring this down into the realm of a more believable plastic here, something like that, a little, little less saturated. Also, the environment will impact the way this material looks. I just want to call out, if you opened a fresh key shot scene, it's going to be the startup environment. I suggest something with more contrast, like a three panel straight 4K. There's some grays, there's some blacks, there's some white. So this will look a little bit more like a photo studio, a little less flat. Let's go into the material graph. Um, before I do that though, if you haven't already done so, I highly recommend downloading my free key shot rendering roadmap. It's a document full of shortcuts, tips, and tricks that I use to push my renderings just a little bit further each time. Visit willgibbons.com slash roadmap to get yours for free today. I'll hit H for the heads up display. Keep an eye on the frames per second. This is a very slow material, and when we're done with it, it's gonna be ludicrously slow. Sorry, I don't know any way around that. It's just the way it is. So we're gonna get into the material graph. And the way we wanna do this is I want certain areas to look brighter. And ideally this is gonna be areas that are a little thicker. Well, we can't really add like fluorescence to this material the way it would be in real life. So we're gonna fake it using a couple, uh, well, a label and a texture. So let's start off with that label and that's going to be a uh, emissive material. And then we're also gonna get a texture. We wanna get the curvature texture as well. So right off the bat, if we go into our emissive and plug it in to the label, it's going to cover it all in white but let's say we make it that bright green, on, uh, green color, excuse me. Now we just need to make this appear in select locations. If I click on the curvature node and hit C on the keyboard, we have red, white, and blue. The blue is gonna be positive curvature. We want this label to show up wherever we have positive curvature. The way to do that is to set this from blue to white. The reason we want that is because we're going to use this curvature as an opacity node. Opacity is going to be anywhere between zero and 100%. And when we convert zero to 100, as far as uh, values into colors, it's gonna be black as zero, white as 100%. So where it's white, we're gonna see this material because it will have an opacity of one. Where it's black, we will not see this material because it will have an opacity of zero. So let's go ahead and take that negative curvature and make it black as well as the zero curvature. Make that black as well. Here, we wanna uh, fine tune this. We want to turn off this radius in pixels because if we render this out at a larger resolution than what you're seeing, then this texture is also going to change. So let's turn that off and set the radius to something like uh, one or two millimeters. The bigger we make this, the more the texture is gonna kind of be softer looking and the more of the material it will cover. If you want to control kind of where it shows up, you can use the cutoff. It's set to one by default. If we go left, it's going to bias toward the white range. And then if we go to the right, it will bias toward the darker range. I think somewhere around 0.5 is looking pretty good. I don't want it to be a sharp cutoff. I want it to kind of fade a little bit and this is looking pretty good. 
Now we can go ahead and plug this into our opacity. Let's get out of preview. As I mentioned, this is a really slow material. We're sitting at 1.4 frames a second. If you have unused CPU cores, go higher. Right now I'm just sitting at 50% usage because I'm also recording this tutorial. So we can also clean up some of this grain by using our denoising. If we go to the image tab, turn on denoise, and let's set the denoise blend to say 0.5. I don't wanna go too high, otherwise it will demolish any sort of detail we have here on this model. And then um, for the Firefly filter, maybe I'll do something like 0.2. That should take care of some of the bright white pixels that might pop up, maybe 0.3. Yeah, so again, it's grainy. But what, what we should be seeing is a little bit brighter values around here. However, if it's not strong enough, then we need to get back into that material and make some edits. There's also a couple things we can do. If I want, so let's preview this. These white values are pretty gray still, and then even this part that should be more black is kind of gray. So I can use a utility called color to number. If you select this connector first, right click, go to utilities, color to number. We've inserted this. Let's preview the color to number with C. We can darken this gray if we want by increasing the input from. And sorry if you're not familiar with color to number, I'll do a separate tutorial on that at some point. And then we wanna make these white parts whiter. So let's take this value of one a little higher as well. So two or maybe even three. That'll really exaggerate that. It's looking pretty good. It will be up to you to play with the values of both the color to number as well as the curvature slider to get the distribution of values that you want. It's really just gonna take some, some messing around with and some time. So here you should be seeing a few things. Again, we're waiting for that denoise to kick in. Once it does, this will smooth out a little bit. There we go. You should be able to see through the plastic. The plastic should be not super shiny, so it's got some roughness, and it should appear to have fluorescence. The way we're simulating that is we're using this emissive as a label wherever the curvature is positive. Since the only places it's really positive is where we've got thickness, like more thick features on the model, it just kind of works as a simulation of what we're after. So this is pretty good if you ask me. However, what if we want to be able to easily control this and change it for different colors, like a, I don't know, bright yellow or orange or pink? So the way I wanna do that is grabbing a utility node called a color adjust. And we should be able to just take our color and use it here. So I'm gonna take, let's actually, yeah, let's take the, the the bright green and plug it in here. This is the same one we're using for the emissive. And we'll plug this into color. So nothing should change here once I do that. We should be able to plug this into the transmission color for our cloudy plastic. However, this may look a little too bright green. So we do have an option here with our cloudy plastic. If you wanted to make some more uh, variation or difference between them, like you wanted to make the actual color of the cloudy plastic a little less bright, we would use one more color adjust here. And it would just be to desaturate this a little bit. So if I hit C to preview, this is the color we're piping into the cloudy plastic. We can desaturate this just a little bit, maybe even make it a little bit lighter. And then this can look more like a normal plastic, not one that's fluorescing. And then we have the more high contrast, brighter version of that color going into emissive. What is the point of this? Well, we're now controlling both of these with one color adjust. And we can do that if we wanna change this to like an orange or another color. We can take this hue slider and we can move this and we can change the color of both the label and the base plastic all together, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, and it's texturable. So technically you could animate this if you wanted to, but um, one more thing, I almost forgot. If you wanna make this neon uh, or the emissive part a little bit brighter, just crank this from like one to two, and that's really going to give off a little bit more light and make it look like it's fluorescing. So what do you think? Is this passable as a fluorescent material? I know it's not exactly the same, but I think this is the best I can do for now. Till next time, happy rendering.